this Saturday in Norway. So I thought I'd do a brief, well, I don't know how brief, maybe just a couple minutes long uh, video. Mrs. Flimsy and I, Mrs. Flimsy being the camera lady today, uh, are here, if you kind of show them where we're at, uh, at the, the Big Dell Fort. Uh, this is, I think maybe Sola, Norway, south of west of Sola. Uh, this was a, a German fort, a Big Dell Fort, that was established uh, or built by the German forces in 1940. So there's actually a lot of uh, insulations here, a lot of things they've crossed off um, where you can't actually go into, but you can still see a lot of different things. And I'll fuck up taking the camera. Um, so I figured I'd do something a little different. I think this is what I'll, in my mind I was thinking for a thank you for the 1300 subscribers. Give you a little more personal tour. So actually they had a gun emplacement uh, here. Um, some sites that have AA guns, others is more uh, larger caliber guns to deal with if there's any British allied forces um, coming through the sea as this was a good location as you can see uh, miles around. So then you have different places where you store ammunition. I could be speaking some of this incorrectly but I had done some research and I need to find this website where I was learning more about the, the designs because uh, these different bunkers have different uh, design concepts uh, to them and so like they that was they're how they use them for um, building of different uh, bunkers uh, throughout Norway. So then you knew what system uh, you were using. So, um, so there's uh, quite a lot here. Some things they've kind of filled in. But we're going to walk down a little bit more over this way. Yeah, so then coming down here, uh, you can see some more down over this way. And we got this over here we'll walk to, and as well as that little site. There's even more uh, further up over here, because uh, it says that this was uh, Fort and Drone Station up until, I think it was 2010. So let's walk down a little further. So now we're inside that large um, circle structure. So I don't know if there's actually something else here to begin with, or what exactly, but we'll walk out of this to a different spot. So we're coming up on the next spot now, and I've actually, this is my first time being here. I uh, have not been here before. Uh, some things you can kind of see they've filled up. A lot of these uh, German bunkers, at least here in the Rogeland County area, that remain, like sometimes it's the farmer fills in the stuff. Uh, entrances to tunnels and the, um, I don't know, words. I'm really struggling with my words right now. Uh, places where uh, personnel bunkers and personnel shelters, they'll just fill them in. So this is actually pretty interesting. And there's definitely would be stuff down underneath here. Because so I'm kind of curious if there's a uh, viewing point. There's actually even, if I paint over here to the left, I'll zoom back in. And you can see that there's a pers uh, place there. And then there's also another position uh, right over there, center of the screen. And looking a little bit more back behind us. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious to uh, walk around over here and see if we can see more. Walk along the edge. Oh, there's a lot of rock. Oh, there's another position down here. I would like to, see, well, maybe not, you know, you can see there's a lot of debris here. So I don't know if, sometimes, I've seen some locations like this, where they have like um, windows, like they would view out of. Like this is probably like uh, a lot of the uh, personnel, like it could be like the little headquarters for the actual base itself. And we saw a personnel bunker shelter like while we were walking uh, up further over here. We walked down this one, but I mean, you can see <laughs> there was a good viewing post here, so it was a bit of a deterring factor. And as far as my knowledge uh, from World War II, I think the only action this area saw was to be some British bombers uh, fly up this way, um, and that was it. So you can kind of, if you picture yourself as a German soldier here throughout most of World War II, after the Germans took Norway, um, they didn't have a lot going on. It was a lot of um, building these bunkers they would also 
I uh, had prisoners of war or uh, the local population helping them build, uh, get the concrete poured and all these things. So you can definitely see they had a system <laughs> for how they did things. It's fun too because sometimes it's kind of like being a detective and trying to figure out maybe what were some of these things for. Like you have, I go back to normal view, like these different wires that come out. So, um, you know, wondering if it's like a camouflage net would go over this place concealing the gun here. That would be set up and there'd be a track where it could uh, go around in a circle and how it rotated. So maybe they have an actual um, a standard type bunker. There are some uh, standard bunker, bunkers here. Um, we're pretty close to the beach called Vigdal Stranen. Um, and there's a couple of beaches, uh, bunkers there as well as uh, Sola Stranen, Sola Beach. And here you see they run up through here. So yeah, I'll take you back up to the larger concrete structure and you can see it more as a whole view. So this is going back up of that big concrete pad. And I'm pretty sure they probably had to have had windows here viewing out, like just very like uh, a lot of concrete, probably pretty deep. So I think they've just covered it since, maybe a farmer dumped all the debris and stuff. Because actually when you walk up here and you look back, it's really large concrete structure. You look at it as a whole, like, oh, if I'm guessing, 40, 50 yards in length. It's not, not a football field, but. And then you would look this way. I zoom in. That's up towards Stavanger. So the airport is like, it's my camera, my finger's really close. It's behind this hill, but it's down over here on the right. So some planes uh, actually uh, fly along the water line here um, and land. So yeah. So it's been interesting to see this more back after it was initially built. Now let's walk out here, see if I can identify a few more things or not. It might not have had a lot here on the roof. I'm gonna assume that's exhaust or like, yeah. Yeah, it'd be neat to try to go on this, but I think it's all barred off. I'll look again and check. Yeah, so I think this is the only entrance I've seen into it. So I was trying to see. Yeah, just picking. Okay, so that's a large steel door. Yeah, so. Yeah, you can see they have the locks on them. Some of them get to go in, but this is probably the, one of the bigger ones I have not been able to get into. Um, there's another fortress. Oh, let's see. Let me zoom in. Got to try to figure this out. It's pretty far up north. I mean, it's like, I don't know, maybe up more that direction. It's called the Fjolloy Fort. That's really cool. And they have some bigger structures you can actually go into. Um, so... They, it was part of the uh, coastal fort system. Maybe I'll have Mrs. Swims who hold the camera and I can explain more of it here in a minute. Yeah, so why there's all these bunkers, maybe if some of you don't know, I should have probably started off this way. Uh, this is part of the um, coastal wall, Atlantic wall, uh, that Hitler had built. So when they took possession of Norway, it was also a way to prevent the Allies from invading from Norway uh, into Europe. But this uh, coastal fort, this Atlantic wall, um, which was kind of unrealistic in several ways. I mean, they built it, um, but it had a lot of design flaws and defense and strategically speaking, would go all the way up northern Norway. So um, I don't know if it goes all the way up towards Tromsø, Trondheim, uh, Harstad, Narvik. Uh, so it went really far to the north and then eventually you get to the, the Russians because Norway does connect with Russia. And then you go way far south, um, there's a lot of uh, bigger coastal batteries. There's a big uh, coastal battery in Kristiansand that uh, can shoot really far. Um, and then all the way basically down to Spain, once Germany had control of uh, Norway and all of Europe, and then you just had the, the British Channel uh, between German control occupied Europe and England. Uh, so in the height of World War II here in Norway, if memory serves correctly, 
there were uh, at the height of German occupation in Norway, there's over 300,000 German uh, soldiers occupying Norway. Because uh, Hitler is pretty, uh, to him, it made a lot of sense that it would be invasion would happen probably through Norway and down. So he was pretty unnerved about that. Um, so that's why they had a lot of uh, these German uh, defenses and stuff. So the, the airport here was actually built, I think, in 38, 39, and then Germans took it uh, pretty quickly after in the 40s. Um, so that didn't work out very well. So it didn't take Norway too long, or Germany too long. I think, I think it was more than two months and they f took control of all of Norway, but then there was a Norwegian resistance defense. Um, but what I want to say uh, when you were talking about these coastal systems, and one of the reasons why I say it's kind of a flawed um, tactically speaking, is that it stretched really thin. So um, you had one of the German commanders was going around. He actually uh, went to all these different uh, coastal places and they were supposed to have enough ammunition supplies to last them three days of fighting. A lot of times they only had enough maybe for 24 hours, uh, not even a full day. Um, so then three days so then they can get the Panzer Division and moved across Europe to wherever uh, it was needed to be. Um, but uh, yeah, it wasn't uh, necessarily too realistic because it was actually a sea cargo boat there in the background. Uh, but it wasn't too realistic because you had, your, I think it was over, I think we're talking over 3,000 miles of coastline with the Atlantic Wall. And they actually have a really superior force, besides with a lot of the port cities that they thought that the uh, Allied forces might invade in. Uh, your forces were stretched too thin. Um, so, so yeah, so I think maybe we'll go one or two more places and I'll wrap up the video after giving you this longer uh, historical discussion. Yeah, so now we're walking up on one of the installations I pointed out earlier from above. You guys should be tall walking up through here. So another round rotation where they have a gun sitting there. And then seeing so actually uh, have some storage. In some place they would have probably had some radio equipment set up yet, but I haven't seen specific signs of that. So there's two more places to show you, and then uh, we'll wrap the video up. Uh, so we were just a minute ago, there's two more entrances. There's one there, there's one over there, but they're both uh, blocked off naturally. So I guess just to prevent people getting into trouble and stuff and doing things up here that they shouldn't. So there's a few strategic reasons why um, having these high locations. One is that you can see very far out into the sea, as well as uh, telecommunications. Uh, and then also, if an invading force has to invade, as Obi-Wan teaches us, as having the high ground, uh, if you have the high ground, it's over, so. <laughs> okay, so this one is actually open, so. <laughs> I still miss his Fumzi's phone, so I can uh, have a flashlight. I don't even know how far this goes in, like I said, I've never been here before. So it could be very brief and short. Yeah, this is pretty uh, smaller space. It's actually wood in here. So I don't know if this was... Yeah, they had it marked off. Yeah, so you can see it used to be a concrete wall and they've put wood in since. So they may have used it for something. Although the light in here is not the best. I guess if I go closer... You can see a bit more. So yeah, so they have just probably repurposed a little bit of this space. So yeah, so we're gonna go to the top now. So we were just in that pile of rocks, <laughs> basically. But Mrs. Flimsy and I wanna walk over here and see a bit more of the view. And if you're new here and you're wondering why you haven't seen Mrs. Flimsy, it's because she has high standards and wants her face revealed to happen at 5,000 subscribers. So if you want to see what Mrs. Flimsy look like, hit the subscribe button. <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to take to get there, but we're making progress. So, and she's actually going to play World of Warships too. She's not played it before. When that day comes. So, okay, now I promise I'm going to take you to the top now, then this video will probably wrap up. So in the last part of the video, climb to the top. 
can't actually go in here. There's a door closed. But, uh, you can see some things. Actually, some steel. We had a locked door on that. You can see the light up there. And we'll walk over here to the right. So you can see it. All that down here. Yeah, so the camera quality shaking is not the best. It's because I'm recording on my phone. One day, we can have something nicer. But for now, this is what you get from Flimsy. There's this rock underneath here. Yeah, so they definitely had a concrete structure built up here. Yeah, so I think the, I've seen these before, and I think you can correct me in the comments if you know. Uh, like you can have like a um, you can see this is used to be a steel ring up on the top in here. And I think that's where they had a machine gun mounted, but I'm not entirely sure. I had to look up this website. I think I referenced in the beginning of this video, and it gives uh, detailed information about what guns and such they had mounted at the different bunker sites throughout uh, here in Norway. Yeah, so this has been filled in a bit too. It'd be deeper. You can see over here, yeah, it looks like the wood's been added on later. I'm wondering if there used to be a full wall come through here or it deteriorated. <sighs> yeah. So it used to be here, looking at all over this. Some of the, the original reason Mrs. Swims and I came here today is that there's a uh, Steins, is it Steins etiquette? Uh, stone face. It's a, a stone down here that looks like it has a face on it. So, so we've come to look at it. And then it had the bonus of a fort also being here. Because there's a helicopter flying in. So, Alright, so this is going to wrap the video up. So a little bit of a personal tour from Flimsy. Now I will say um, that Mrs. Flimsy and I are planning to get a DJI drone, hopefully, this summer. And then I plan to do like uh, use the drone to fly around and I have like a professional like, kind of like a lapel mic uh, mounted on my shirt and I can sh uh, talk while flying around or do a voice over layer a voice over later on the video uh, giving some more information once I find more of the statistical uh, information about these different bunker sites because there's a lot of them actually here in the Rogaland area so if you liked today's video give a thumbs up if you did not give a thumbs down subscribe if you do want to see more Again, thanks for the subscriptions. Uh, you know, passing over 1,300 subscribers is really cool as we're on our way uh, to 1,400 now. And then uh, 2,000, there's a community day where I'll play operations on the NA and EU server. So if you want to join in on that, uh, please consider subscribing and we'll have a day for EU and a day for NA. So until next time, take care.